Hello, hello, we are live. It's another episode of Paysetters Online Business Expo. And I am so excited about the conversation that we are going to have today. Now, before we, we get started, uh, let me just remind you all that this is probably a good time for you to share this live on your timeline or in any of your groups on Facebook. Uh, you know, here at Paysetters, we love your interaction. So we want you to get involved and uh, we want you to interact with us, comment right through this, uh, this live and just feel free to be yourself. And we've got a motto. Our motto is be a game changer. And my guest today is a true definition of a game changer. When I say he's a game changer, I really mean it. And what's so special about my guest today is how he's not accepted nothing but the best for his future. He's not allowed, uh, he's somewhat uh, deprived a bringing to define who he becomes. And as you listen to his story, you're going to notice how he has come full circle from, from being raised in rural Zimbabwe to now creating a multi-million dollar company. How powerful is that? Like, seriously. So today he'll be sharing a bit about his background. He'll tell us a little bit more about his companies. Um, he says he's an industry. He wants to disrupt the industry, right? So he'll be telling us a little bit more about how he plans to disrupt the industry with his companies. And he's also going to share some tips um, on success. So let's welcome Taquana Chikaranini. Taquana, it's such an honor um, to have you on this platform. And I am honored to be having this conversation with you here today. And we at Paysetters are so grateful that you've been able to take time out of your very busy schedule to be with us here today. How are you doing? I am super excited. I think with that kind of introduction, I should be the one that's honored to be here, to be honest. Uh, so I'm super excited. I, I can't wait to share a few nuggets that I've learned along the way. So oh, um, I started. Oh, great, great. So who is Taquana? Like, how, how, do you, how could you describe yourself maybe in just like five words? Who is Taquana? I, I barely know who Taquana is myself as well, but uh, I think I'm just a combination like everybody else, a combination of this and that. But I think okay. one of the over, sort of overarching things that you would uh, literally just know about Taquana is I think, um, Thinking about it, I think there's a, a bit of an Afrocentric, uh, there's a little Afrocentricism in me. I think it was much more vocal when I was younger, uh, mm -hmm. but the older, older I become, uh, the more it has just become about my, the way I live my life just pretty much, uh, you know, really and truly speaks to that Afrocentric uh, nature or side of me, really. And I would like to think of myself as a bit of a dreamer. I think my mom, ever since I was young, my mom used to used to call me Joseph the Dreamer. You know, I used to just have wild dreams. Even yeah. when I lived in like small little townships in Zimbabwe, I used mm -hmm. to always have these you know, ridiculous dreams of what we were going to become um, yeah. and in spite of the sort of circumstances we found ourselves in. So I think mm -hmm. um, I'm a centric dreamer. I'm a bit of a traveler as well myself. I think I find a lot of joy in that. I think I've been to about 40 countries now as we speak. Wow. Um, so that side of me that's just very adventurous and wants to understand other people's cultures. Um, and then you can't be you can't be you can't be in business unless you're very positive because I think business is just about trying to deal with negative situations on a daily basis. What yes. will break will break, and mm -hmm. what will go wrong wrong. And I think uh, my positive my sort of the positive side in me has really shone through in the last four years that we started with um, with Sandy Two. Um, so I think I'm just a combination of those things, you know, I think, wow. and I could go on and on, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to give myself a big head. I could go on an ego trip for a bit. I, eh? I knew that you were going to be very humble about this. That's why I specifically asked you that question. But, um, 
Yes, yeah, so you are British Zimbabwean. So where were you born? I think I think I'm all the way Zimbabwean. I was born and raised in uh, in a small little village called Chibi. And mm -hmm. the one thing about this village, I mean, I know that I understand that these these people from Nigeria, Ghana, and uh, uh, across the world, I think the one thing about where I was born, there's a proverb about that was made about the place that I'm from. It says mm -hmm. in Chona, uh, Chibi, Yagabika yeah. Mabu. Which literally translates uh, to things are meant to be tried. An old lady from Chibi cooked mm -hmm. up some stone and had herself some soup. So I think uh, being from that sort of uh, environment, I think it's just been pretty much uh, uh, something that is, uh, uh, has been part and parcel about my life, really. I've just been out there trying things. Um, I tried Sandy too, and it stuck. And prior to that, I tried several other things. Uh, some of them didn't, and some did. So I'm just a guy who, when you tell me anything, I pretty much just jump on it. Wow, wow. So what does the name Takwana actually mean? <laughs> so it's enough for enough. So, sorry, you know, just bear with me. Okay. Um, okay. I've, got, I've got volume on another device, sorry. So I've just put that on mute. Okay. Right. Uh, so, mm -hmm. go on. So, Takwana is uh, it's Shona, which translates to uh, enough, really. So you can it tells you all you need to know about about the situation my parents found themselves in. I'm the last born of four children, um, and you know it was just said. You know, I've got a pretty interesting story though that my my uh, my mom told me. So what happened was uh, when my mom got married, she moved over to my dad's sort of rural home. And where she had her first child, and um, when after you know during that pregnancy she felt sick most of the time, and it was mm -hmm. the same case as well. she had a second son and the third son. So the family got together, you know, and they sat down and said, you know what, you need to stop having kids now because um, because you know you're becoming more or less like a liability for lack of a better word because you're meant to be you know here helping up with the chores and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So mom got, sick. and then. Um, she was told, you know what, we, 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 enough of these kids. But mom being mom, uh, she ended up, you know, not taking the contraceptives that she was meant to have been taken. And voila, Taquana came along. So they sat down again and said, okay, we're going to call this boy Taquana so that people know <laughs> that, listen, we're serious. This is it. We enough. No more. No more. No more kids. Yeah. It's, it's such a lovely name. And, and this is one thing about uh, not just Zimbabwe, but Africa as a whole. Um, I've noticed most people with an African name, um, it always has some kind of meaning or story to it, which is which I think is quite beautiful. So, um, growing up, like, what was your childhood like? Do you have like a best memory, like one that you can share from your childhood? I don't know or about maybe? one. It was just a I series of very silly things, really. When you when you when you reflect back, so I mm -hmm. grew up initially. My initial sort of childhood was back at my rural areas. I grew up there and then we moved to a small township called Rimuka Kadoma. And uh, the one of the things that I remember very well is is my grandma telling us stories, you know, like these stories about rabbits and uh, and the elephant, how the elephant was this smart or the rabbit was this smart and without trick everybody. So I remember distinctively, you know, sitting down and underneath the bright moon of, uh, you know, the rural areas because there isn't much electricity. So when the moon is out, the moon is out. So you really has that magical sort of sense to it. So those are the yeah. stories I remember, about how slow the tortoise was, but always got to where it wanted. Um, things that, you know, you, you know, lessons that you take for granted as a kid, or you don't really make, that don't really make much sense as a kid. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I started a business, you tend to learn that the consistency of the tortoise over time, as opposed to trying to rush things sometimes, is more important than you yeah. would um, need along in life. So it's uh, those are sort of memories that I had, and I remember silly stories like because when I remember, you know, we used to live in a very deprived township, right? One of my favorite stories was whenever we had like a good meal, like when we had chicken uh, at mm -hmm. home, you know, it was once in a while it was never every day, right. but when yeah. you did, you, you definitely made sure that your friends knew that you had some chicken. So you would you would grab the bone and spread the cooking oil around your mouth, and you just <laughs> eat them and just uh, you know your oh. friends knew that. Today, so those, 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 you know, those are the best of times. Yeah, you know, like um, life was much simpler then before mm -hmm. all these texts. So I know. 
but uh, what what's really interesting about you is so so you talk a lot about your 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 upbringing but um i've noticed that you don't really mention that you were this village boy that was privately educated <laughs> you always miss out that bit <laughs> That's, that's, that part is not interesting. I, I don't think I was privately educated. I went to a Catholic school, right? So it was, I don't know if you yeah. can call that a, a, uh, you can call that a, a private private school, but uh, I think well, that I was. Well, I think more in like the British term, private school, but for us, it was more like boarding school, wasn't it? Boarding school. It was, yeah. yeah. And it just speaks to the, to, to the sacrifices that my parents had to, you know, pretty much just go through. Uh, mm -hmm. My mom was a a trader she used to sell what is what is called uh, some funny stuff i don't know what you call it in english but she used to go across to south africa and sell that and she sacrificed every itty bitty penny that she made from there and took me to the best schools that um, that she could you know the, 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 the few pennies that she gained could take me and it's, it's the same for my father as well mm -hmm. my father was ahead um and he was very keen on a good education because you always used to say it would change the entire trajectory of your life. Um, education mm -hmm. is something that's essential. When you talk, you know, I think it would make a difference in uh, what business you get. I think, yeah, I think it's just a reflection of the parents. Uh, you know, they were very much keen on on education for their kids. And, uh, so when you were in school, like at a younger age, what, what did you want to be? Do you remember? Uh, in primary school, um, I don't remember much really in primary school what I wanted to be, but I I, I remember high school, I mm -hmm. developed this obsession with basketball, you know, because I think in primary school, I was fairly smart. In fact, I was very smart in primary school, education, as to like reading and everything. And then when I went to high school, I went to a high school called Chaplin High School in a small little town called Gweru. Right. And mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember there, I developed this obsession with playing basketball. You know, I used to have a nickname, my friends used to call me Kobe Bryant. Uh, and I used to want to be like him, and I developed this really huge obsession on this basketball so much that my grades just went down the toilet, which is a lack of a better word, really. Um, but I think I may have overestimated my talents because I had this idea of coming to play in the NBA, and then just yeah. neglected my, my learning so much that all that smartness just went down the drain, and my grades started to get really bad. And you know, my father, being somebody in the education sort of uh, sector, was very disappointed with that. So um, that that's that's what I remember mainly about high school. You know, most 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 people were were quite keen on on dating girls. I think I went through my four years in high school not mm -hmm. having dated any, but my girlfriend then was my basketball, and I just uh, even up until now, it's something that I it's mm -hmm. the one little sport I can just play basketball if I can. So I used to have this really huge obsession with playing basketball. Wow. Um, I don't think my talents matched my dreams really at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, this thing of focus is something that you've always had then from a younger age. It's not just like something that you've just started, like you've learned to do now. Because I see that you're really focused when it comes to your business. Like you don't really joke when it comes to your business. So it's, it's interesting to know that you've always been like that. But what was your first job? Did you ever have a job like when you were in Zimbabwe? Or no, so I never had a job when I was in Zimbabwe. I think I left high school, and mm -hmm. then for about a year, I was just trying to get myself to England. You know, my friend had, had moved over to England, and he said, him and his family had said, come over, come over mm -hmm. to England, and stay with us, you know, till you, you know, you, you find your way around. So I never had, really never had any any job when I was in Zimbabwe. It's my, my all levels, and I just had this obsession of moving to England. When I moved to England, um, mm -hmm. Everybody else, you know, I did each. I did. There's no job that I didn't do. Really, like at one point, I was sweeping cigarette butts in the shopping mall. Um, mm -hmm. I was picking trash, and this is literally my first job. In I was 17 or 18. Never, mm -hmm. never been my whole life. But having come to a country where my parents weren't there, and I was just living with a friend and his and his family, you literally have to just take what's on the offer, right? And yes. I did everything. I did everything. I was. Um, getting up at four in the morning, one of the most depressing things I did is I had a job, right? Well, I, mm -hmm. I worked for an agent and they would say, okay, they, there's a particular job that we've cooked up, but you have to, you and other people have to go to a particular location yeah. and uh, get there. You might, or you, you may, or you may not get the mm -hmm. job though people think is suitable for the job. So you get up at four in the morning and five times I went there and five times they didn't pick me. I was quite skinny then, really, but now nah, this kid, 
he's not built for uh, he's not built for what we had and just hurt my feelings i'll just go back home broke and everything but uh um it's very i mean it's just, it's an immigrant story right i mean everybody's got a very yeah. interesting story about uh, so um, you you don't really have like experience of trying to find a job or working in zimbabwe as a young person no 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 i was, I was too young and yeah. as you know 95 percent of people in zimbabwe well they say are employed on a very informal sort of basis isn't it so yeah um, I did some research recently, and um, it was to do with the youth employment in Zimbabwe, like last week, because I was writing, putting together this article, and it was really sad to for me to discover that there is about what was it? So at the moment, Zimbabwe, sixty-five percent of Zimbabwe's population are young people, right? And within that, there is forty uh, percent of uh, young Zimbabweans that get to the age of 30 without ever having a job. So I found that a bit re a bit sad. Um, but before we carry on, I just want to welcome everybody that's joined us. Um, I've got an amazing and very inspirational guest with me today. His name is Takwana Chikaranini. And he is going to be, well, we're just discussing a little bit about his background. He's going to tell us a little bit more about his business. He's created a really cool brand called Send It To. I've got one of their t-shirts on here today. I'm actually one of their customers, so I know how the service works, but he's going to tell us all about it. Hi, Joy. Thanks for joining us. Um, we want you to interact with us, ask your questions. Um, later on on the live, um, I'm going to give uh, a couple of people the opportunity to join us and ask Taquana their questions directly. So just keep interacting. If you've got any questions, feel free to just um, put them in the comments and we'll try and get through all your questions. So Taquana, do you, have you like growing up, did you have somebody that you feel like influenced um, you in a way that has benefited who you are today? Like, did you have role models or? Um, I, I think I think I did. Like, I, I think um, obviously they were much closer to home as in they were my mother and father, really, where mm -hmm. people are just looking up to. Really, my mom was such a tenacious woman. Uh, I knew I was going to, I mean, I, I say that now, but uh, it had been in my DNA already to become an entrepreneur because my mom was, uh, was uh, like she used to, she was a cross-border trader. She would go to South Africa, sell a couple of goods and then come back. Uh, mm -hmm. With X amount, she brought me mountain bikes. She bought me everything. You know, I got sh uh, very cool sneakers as a kid. So those things meant a lot to me as a kid. So my mm -hmm. mom was just one person we knew. Uh, as and when she went to work, she always delivered. She used to bring us chocolate eclairs. You know, these sweets. I, I I always wonder why I love them so much, even up until this age. But my mom used to buy me these sweets when she went to South Africa, and that was always one thing I always looked up to. So my mom was mm -hmm. always uh, was always someone I I, I knew. You know, when uh, when the, the rent was due, you can be rest mm -hmm. assured she's going to do what she needs to do to ensure that uh, everybody's food on the table. And it's the same for my dad. You know, my dad is a man with a lot of pride. You know, my dad would say things like, you know, you might not have a lot of money, but you could tell he had a bank full of pride because mm -hmm. um, he carried himself and things of that nature. And these are things that inherently were deeply embedded in me uh, or in my DNA now because um, these are things that I was fortunate enough to have, a, uh, you know, a mother and father home. And this mother and father home was a, such a good example of what you could be in life. So I mm -hmm. think that's where those were my initial sort of role models. As I grew up, you know, I think I then tended to rely on TV and uh, and athletes like uh, Kobe Bryant himself. I, you know, I never met the guy, but he was somebody I obsessed over miles away in Africa. I just wanted to be like him. I grew my hair just like him, and even even walked like he did. You know, so uh, it's mm -hmm. very strange. The young mind can be influenced. Oh, yeah, lovely! Like it's it's really you know just watching you and 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 following your journey. It's really beautiful how you have such a great relationship with your mom. So that's really good. That's good. So let's move on a little bit and talk a bit about your business. So how did the idea of your business come about? So, you know, my business, I was very fortunate. So I, I like to call myself as an accidental entrepreneur. 
at the mm -hmm. time anyway. When I'm looking back at it, it all seems to make sense. So what happened is I worked in, uh, in the UK. I ended up working as a mental health practitioner. I used to work with kids. I got accused of, um, of gross misconduct at work and ended up losing my job. So in between time, I was looking for any and everything that would make sense really. Like I got into network marketing and this is the one place that, you know, a lot of people were like, nah, it's not for you. But I learned quite a lot. I remember traveling all the way to Las Vegas and having uh, a conversation with them. Um, uh, well, I saw Les Brown, you know, like, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, the modern speaker. And oh, he's, yeah. He's this, You've got to be hungry. I know. Like, oh, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, when I'm feeling a bit down, I listen to a bit of Les because he just he's got a way of just uh, putting you in the right mindset, isn't he? <laughs> That's it. That's it. So when I when I got into this sort of space, you know, and like I said, I flew to Las Vegas, watched him speak for about forty five minutes. He literally lit a fire in me. At one point, I was wow. about to cry. Twenty thousand people. So this is what network marketing did for me. I think it taught me how to relate better to people because at the end of the yeah. day, you don't really start business in isolation. Uh, it's, it's, it's just about relationships because, uh, you know, a, a business is nothing but its, but its customers. Um, so that happened. I went through that phase, you know, after having lost my job, trying to find my feet along those sort of ways. And then uh, a good friend of mine, you know, my, my current business partner, Ibrahim Asumano, mm -hmm. um, is from Guinea. Uh, yeah. One day at his house and he just said to me, Listen, I've got this idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, um, do you know that 70% of immigrants have never sent air to my mobile top back home? Uh, it's something that has never been done. I'm all something that uh, uh, most like most people don't do, right? So I was like, oh, cool. Um, so what's, what's your story? I think, why don't you go 50 50 on this? Business that I've, come up with. I've put together a website and we can get people to send credit back home, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew it was a viable business because he then told me that there's a current business, there's a business that's doing this line of work already. And they're moving about a million dollars in revenue on a daily basis. Then I was like, say less, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, so I'll give it a try. And I knew where I knew the magic was, was because I tried it myself. I tried, I sent my mom some airtime and my parents and my dad as well. And then I got, you know, you get that immediate call from back home. And yeah. back then it was very expensive, you know, to get a call from back home. I'm like, mom, you're wasting the credit. He's like, ah, oh, thank you very much um, for the airtime. And this is where I knew the magic was. This is why I knew I wasn't necessarily selling airtime. I knew I was connecting people. Um, mm -hmm. And from then, I put my head down because I knew it was something worthwhile. We started it in his living room thinking that, you know what, if it sticks, it sticks. But as yeah. we speak today, we've managed to move millions. And we've managed to have customers in over 110 countries. So actual active customers that have sent airtime using our platform in wow. countries that I can't announce uh mm -hmm. just two Africans who just set their mind on something and it stuck and like i said you know it's been largely due to the fact that the community came through and rallied and supported us and uh i'm forever indebted to them uh, because yes. they gave yeah mm -hmm. wow that's amazing hi florence thank you for joining us I'm glad you're enjoying this conversation. Um, to anybody that's watching this live away from Pay Setters page, um, for me to be able to see your comments, you need to actually link back on the live from the page, not from the group. So if you want me to see your uh, comments in real time, just click back to the uh, to to the Pay Setters page where the live is streaming, and I'll be able to see your comments and give you a shout out. I've got Taquana here. This is an opportunity for you to, to um, ask him any questions that you have or just, you know, give us um, a comment, tell us where you're watching from and uh, we'll carry on with our conversation. So Taquana, when, once you conceived this business idea, what was your mission? Like you've just, described about how um you know you had all the stats and all the information you found a need and you decided to fulfill the need but what was your mission behind all that was it just about providing a service for immigrants or there was more to it um there was definitely more to it you know i had a bit of a chip on my shoulder you know i just lost my job and i'd lost it under circumstances where uh, i was dealing with people i thought were my friends and you know and when 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 you know, when uh, when the lights were turned on, you know, the cockroaches just all split, you know, and uh, that's how I felt at the time. So I had a bit of that chip on my shoulder. So sometimes, you know, it's not necessarily always, I always tell people that love isn't necessarily always the thing that should drive you. Sometimes hate is a good motivator. Uh, 
but that didn't last for long, you know, because I think sometimes hate then consumes you. Uh, mm -hmm. So I had that for you know, like I think it was something that really motivated me for a bit. And then um, um, when I got into it, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to fail at this because I'd literally failed at any and every venture that I'd got into. Um, mm -hmm. So there was that. There was on a, on a personal level, there was that particular uh, particular issue with me. But I knew also the fact that, you know, 70% of the people have never tried it. So we knew there was a bit of a gap in the market there because everybody wants to have that sense of connectivity with their family. And everybody wants to do very small things for like two pounds, three pounds, five pounds, and get that instant gratification that comes from somebody who's going to take your five pounds or your three pounds. Like the world evolves around that five pounds because it's a lot to them. Mm -hmm. um, that there was that so i thought you know what let's go to work let's try and represent let's try and grow something that's going to outlive us and um um and just see where we can take it so we, yeah. we, we 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 went to work with my business partner countless sleepless nights countless failures countless everything but we just persisted because it was it was above and beyond uh just trying to make money out of it really we just want to represent possibility like i always keep telling people that mm -hmm. all i want my life about but that young man there just showed us that you know what even kids from less you know kids from neighbors like ours can become yes. anything so yeah. that's inherently really pushed me for the more part really wow just uh um reading your bio really uh it, it, there were so many lessons to be learned for myself but what one uh, lesson that i got out of it was what you were just saying about how you um started this business after you got um dismissed from your job <laughs> for on on allegations of gross misconduct or whatever and i could so relate to it because i found myself in a very similar situation although it's like completely different circumstances but i find my i found myself in a situation where with my situation uh one day I I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my story because mine was all like racially motivated the moment i made allegations like uh, I, it was a discrimination claim that I made. I, I, I made a report about um, discrimination in the workplace and then they ganged up on me and got me dismissed. So, cause what I did is when I set up my brand, I was still like working and that was like my safety net. And uh, once I got dismissed on gross misconduct, I was just like, okay, I'm, I say to myself, this is it. This is the last time I will ever be employed. For, and that day was the day I hired myself to work for myself. And I think there's power that comes from you um, getting fired and then hiring yourself. Because then I've discovered that since that happened, there's more opportunities coming my way because I know I've got to make it work. So I think that is a lesson for many people. Don't ever take it, especially if you've got like ideas and things that you've been sitting on and then you find, especially now, it's even most relevant now with this whole COVID situation. We've got lots of people, especially in the UK, losing their jobs. So this is a perfect opportunity to just work on your dream and just go for it, I guess. So tell us a bit more about Send It To. What, what does Send It To do? What, okay. what uh, do you offer and you know? Okay, no, I just wanted to speak just to touch on what you were just speaking there. Like, you know, like there's one of my favorite quotes is, uh, is I asked God for strength and it yes. gave me problem. Uh, I, I, you know, I've got something that I always revisit uh, anytime anything goes wrong. Um, mm -hmm. And then go anyway because I, I know you know for the most part we're working at a at a fraction of what we're capable of, and sometimes hardships are the very things that we need so that that other fraction that we're not in that's just the lying docile is, is sort of put fully utilized. So I think you're so right. I think uh, you know you ask God for strength. God is a funny way of giving you problems, and then yeah. you know further down the line when you look back at it, you're like you know what that was mean testing medicine, but the client needed it. Um, and you just turn out way better for it. Um, send it to, what does send it to do? We connect people for the most part. I think that's been our core business. We allow migrant sort of communities living away from home to just get on on a website or app and simply mm -hmm. by one, three steps, send airtime to over 400 sort of mobile operators across the globe. So we have a reach of almost a billion people uh, when wow. you 
hopefully, right? So that's been our core business. And in recent months, you know, more of uh, as a result of um, of uh, of our users really saying, listen, we've been doing this for a while now. Why don't you add money transfer onto your platform? So we've gotten into into the money transfer business and we move money to destinations like Zimbabwe, Uganda, Ghana, Guinea, um, Zambia, and we're going to be introducing places like Mozambique very soon. Um, nice. So we have Africa as well, uh, hopefully in the next week. So we move money uh, and we connect people, I like to say. Wow. Uh, I'm just going to give a shout out to um, Phoebe Chinyanga. Um, hi, Phoebe. Hi, Patrick. Patrick is our top fan. I'm glad you're enjoying the conversation. Very interesting conversation from your guest. It's a story of resilience and self-belief. And yeah, I can't wait for, for Taquana to give us some, some top tips on success. But yes, you're right. It's resilience and self-belief. And this is one thing that you'll find amongst um, anybody and everybody that goes after their dreams and, and, and just pursues their passion, they all seem to have very similar qualities. So I'm hoping that you take it all in and uh, you can build some of these qualities within yourself and be, be the best version of yourself. Um, D. Chris says, I'm really being inspired. Hope to hire myself too. Yes, D. Trust me, you got to fire the employer and hire yourself. That is the only way, right? Uh, Phoebe, I like your honesty, Taya Use. I love you more. I love you too, sweetie. Uh, Ruby, loving the money. Oh, you got one of your customers here. Yes. Sawira Ru says, loving the money transfer, especially the delivery. Oh, thank wow. you, Ruby. Uh, you're the top, Sawira. I know like in the last week or so, you've done a few transfers and you've made your mom, your sister happy because they're getting money at their doorstep. So thank you for joining us today. I've got Taquana here. If you've got any questions for him, feel free to ask him. Hi, Nikki Moyo. Hi, Nikki. Nice seeing you here. Uh, if you've got any questions for Taquana, he's right here. And you can tell us about your lovely experiences with Sendy2. I've got nothing but nice things to say about Sendy2. So, yes, so Taquana has told us a bit about his background. If you missed it, you're going to have to replay this because he's just, like, so inspirational. There's some people that you speak to and they just stare up something within you, and he's one of those people. So he was just telling us about some of the, the service uh, provided by Sandy too. And uh, my next question for you, like how do you advertise Sandy too? Like do you advertise or do you just market or is that the same thing? So so our story has always, um, our policy has always been very simple. From day one, we've always said to ourselves, let's just simply tell our story. Like, that's the one thing that we have always been consistent. I mean, if you look, if you look back all the way back to, um, to when we first started, you know, we have a very, you know, it's, it sounds seems counterintuitive, but the thing I found about business is for the first thing, first things first, you have to sell yourself there, because people do business with people who they trust and like. It. That's just human nature, right? Sell your company and then sell your product. Mm -hmm. So from day one always been like listen my name is Takwana and I'm from a small town in Zimbabwe and this is my story we've taught it so much well we've taught it so well that it has translated it literally translated into millions of dollars or millions of pounds in this case so we we've always simply gone down that route you know we've understood that you know we could we can get into this space and try and market dollar for dollar with this particular company that has been around for 100 years uh, we knew we were going to be broke. So sometimes it's just about trying to deviate. If you're going to fight uh, a Goliath, uh, mm -hmm. it's not in interest to fight him on his best terms, right? You have to fight him on that particular, because I think the stone just hit him right here where there was that one area where there was no armor, right? The world mm -hmm. was protected. So it's very important that um, when, when you get into business, you fully understand your weaknesses and your strengths. Uh, yeah. And our strength, in our story and we've told it very well and uh, the community has come and rallied with us and uh, like i said you know it's a 
it's something that gives me a lot of pride that people, you know, somebody just moved seven thousand dollars with us um, a couple of hours ago, and I'm just like, wow, the trust that we're getting from the community is phenomenal, and we are wow. forever indebted to them uh, for that, really. Well, you are really doing us pride as Zimbabweans, as Africans, as Black people. You are really, really doing so well, and of and it's not just about. The, the, the monetary value, it's you telling your story in a way that inspires people. And I, I'm hoping that as you carry on telling your story, people will not just be inspired, but they'll be, trans they'll be transformed and they'll be inspired to become the best version of themselves. So I've got Kudai that wants to ask you some questions. So I think now would be a good time to connect him. So here it is. Um, he, 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 he looks a little serious. He just he, he wants to come uh, and murder me today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just enjoying myself, you know, following the conversation. Uh, you are a blessing to our generation. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, you know, send it to myself as well. You know, I, I've really benefited from it. You know, like what you said, it's about, um, you know, connecting people. Um it, it's one of it, it was one of my questions you know i wanted to ask but you have already answered it um you know you've managed to uh connect us with people you know who are back in zimbabwe i mean manchester united kingdom but you know one thing i've you know really benefited from sandy to is you know someone from you know one of the villages in zimbabwe being able to connect with them and you know, there and then you see them, you know, um, like what you're saying, your mom and your dad, you know, calling you to say thank you and, you know, connecting with them there and then. So I really appreciate that. Uh, I was going to ask, you know, wh when did you really say, uh, you know, when this idea came, what was that moment, you know, when you really say, this is it, you know, I'm not going to to be distracted. This is it. This is the idea I want to run with. You know, when when was that? Do you remember, you know, a particular maybe situation, you know, when you say this is it? I know you spoke about, you know, when your parents um, spoke to you, but is there any other thing, you know, that happened, you know, for you to say this is the idea? Uh, I don't think, I don't think it's a, uh... I don't think it's a combination. I think it's more or less a combination of uh, of, uh, of of moments, right? Like I think you know, in, in my line, my former way, line of work uh, was mental health. I was a mental health practitioner. We used to say to people, "How you do one thing is inherently how you do everything." So if you are a quitter at one particular field, chances are if you get into business, you're pretty much just going to quit really at that as well. I've always had this thing, you know, ever, ever since I was a kid. You know, like I remember, I think it became very apparent. When I was in high school, um, I had this I developed this obsession and love for basketball so much yeah. that anything else didn't matter. Uh, you know, I just went, I just went. Literally, my my focus was just about that, and it's um, pretty much something that I got really deeply embedded in, right? right. Um, and it, it's, when I went to to England, I, I got obsessed with the idea of wanting to travel to all hundred and ninety something countries. And I only managed to do 40, but I was going for it literally, like, you know, like, so it's inherently always been something, a characteristic trait of mine. When I do something, I pretty much just, uh, you know, I go, I go a thousand percent. I right. literally, I'm um, that, 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 uh, you know, that general that takes his army to an island and then ends the boats uh, yes. and tells them, we either take over this island or we die on this island. So True. something that's always something as a, as a young fella. It's always been something that I've always, I think I've come to sort of approach things in that sort of manner. Um, so, you know, it, it, it was a series of failures. When we started, it was not a bed of roses. We constantly kept failing. We kept constantly fail, failed to meet the targets. But the character of mine was just like, listen, you know, we're going all in and let's just go for it. Um, okay. And the funny thing about business, right, you, you set out an objective you want to make. Ten ten dollars, you make ten dollars. Suddenly, you want to make a hundred dollars. You hundred thousand, a million. It's never enough. You're never satisfied. Yeah. You know, you think that the fact that we've moved millions now would be like, oh, we've arrived. But now we're thinking maybe a hundred million, maybe a billion. Mm -hmm. um, so you mm -hmm. are constant, constantly dissatisfied. If that makes sense, you never really get a moment. It's been true in my case. We never really got a moment where we thought, wow. Um, but um, you know, it's. Um, we, we, we've just been running with it, David, and it just feels like you're constantly not meeting your objectives, really. 
Okay, thank you. And, um, you know, regarding your team, the team you work with, uh, how did you build your team? Was it like trial and error or it just everything came together, you know, nicely? Ooh, I wish everything came together. Um, you know, like I always laugh at my business partner that we literally virgins at this stuff, you know, we're business virgins and our story is just best characterized by it. Like what you said, trial and error. You know, I'm a huge fan of, you know, you don't necessarily have to be good to get started. But to get good, you need to get started, really. I mean, I'm sitting here on a on a panel and people are calling me an expert. But, uh, you know, I've just been one person who's just gone out there and tried things uh, and constantly failed. And I always believe that the best MBA is the actual sort of uh, doing the stuff. So it was just a series like of us just learning as we grew. And okay. what you find, I think, uh, what I always tell people, like, when they're trying to, most people, they have a business idea and they want to execute it. I just always tell them, have a bias for action, right? Go out there, and start small, start big, start however. The most important thing that you're ever going to do in business is get started. You would find that yeah. things would tend to make matters and matter, sort of make sense as you go along your particular journey. You know, uh, one of my favorite saying is, uh, you know, synchronicity is God's way of remaining anonymous, right? As mm -hmm. you go down the path, uh, you're going to constantly, you're going to meet a kudzai, you're going to meet a, a tire, you're going to meet random people. It's yeah. seemingly so random, but it's God's way of, just trying to put and place people in your way, in your path that wouldn't have been there had you just chilled and say to yourself, you know what, I need to know everything before I get into this particular business. I need to know how to start a team. I need to know how to do this and that. But uh, as our book shows, we are a perfect example of people who were not particularly in the line of business. My, my business partner is more smarter than me in that sense. But even him too, you know, is out of his depth quite constantly. Um, but it, it comes down to the fact that you know, everything you you, you 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 see around you was built by people who are no smarter than you. People who wear their trousers one leg at a time, just like you do. Right. Okay. Possibly maybe my last question is regarding, you know, opposition. You know, I know, you know, maybe from the time you started up to now, you know, you continue coming against, you know, opposition. Um, how did you manage to, you know, deal with, you know, different kinds of opposition, oppositions and also was there anything to do with your race uh well, well you as far as race is concerned you know me and my business partner laugh about it sometimes you know we we've got uh we've got investors that are from england and france and uh, germany and things of that nature where it will take us six months to get in touch with a particular ceo uh, you know, the white boys on our team will take them six minutes and they'll be like, ah, you get a call from them like we have, we have uh, lunch set up for uh, set up for Tuesday with the CEO of this particular, you know, marketing business and things of that nature. But for me, I've never really worried about that thing. You know, I think the only thing that I know about business and opposition and everything is you really need to just concentrate on the things that you have some control over, right? The only thing we can do is worry about our own effort. That's always been my agenda. And that's why we are very customer centric. You know, we just Focus if Kudzai is our customer. The only thing we have to make sure is Kudzai is happy. You know, it's just like trying to build a great wall. You don't set out to just build a great wall at once. You just set out by placing one brick at a time. You press it nicely, and yeah. before you know it, when you look back, you're like, wow, you just built the great uh, Zimbabwe ruins here by just simply concentrating on the things that we can focus on. And, um, you know, human beings are not, uh, are not idiots. You know, I think uh, sincere, being sincere in your approach comes across. Um, and I hope, you know, like we, our clients really and truly can tell that we're very sincere about their business. We don't necessarily always get things right, but we're out there to make sure that we're serving them and doing what's right by them and at times over delivering um, on what we intend to do really. So it's just been about that. Uh, opposition is just a sign, you know, uh, if you, you know, if the one thing that video games have ever taught me was the minute you start to encounter opposition, it means you're heading the right direction. That's it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, th th thank you very much. You know, I'm I'm waiting for that time when you, when you'll be delivering cash to Nyanga. You know, I'm from Nyanga, so let it be on your list, please. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kuzai. Thank you. <laughs>
How did you handle setbacks and doubts? I find this can be a deterrent for moving forward in the first few years of starting a business. Hi, Cynthia. Cynthia. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's that saying, Murphy's Law, right? What can go wrong will go wrong in business, right? Um, that's why sometimes it's important to have uh, a reason that's just above and beyond money. You know, you have to find. I'm assuming Cynthia is married because she's uh, she's at the beach there with uh, with two kids in the background and a husband. I'm assuming. Um, so I think sometimes attaching the reasons why you do certain things to other than just yourself, right? Your husband, your kids, and things of that nature. So you know, as and when you take the punches and you feel like giving up, which happens to everybody. You know, like when you look back at these great entrepreneurs, the Steve Jobs, the Phil Knights, the guy that's responsible for the Nike shoes that we wear at every pace of you know at every junction of their life they contemplated quitting even when they were making hundreds of millions so it's something mm -hmm. that doubt and setbacks are always going to come it's a sign of life problems are a sign of life the only people in in, in in life and in business that don't have any problems are people that are dead and buried you know so you should be very happy to have these sort of uh, uh setbacks because they come i think it's just a uh, god's way of just trying to see how badly you want it so sometimes when you have a reason that's just above and beyond just after you say you know what i want to make a million dollars uh and as and when you get setbacks you you easily give up but when you say to yourself you know what i want to build my mom a house on an island in the caribbeans you know that you know if you quit you quitting on everybody else so i think just finding your why is important um and uh, just understanding that the problems are part and parcel of the story uh, everybody has them uh, it's not unique to yourself unfortunately when you have them you just feel like it's just you and the world is crumbling around you um yeah. but um I tell you as of today we are the problem that we have to deal with but we keep pushing because the reason is beyond what we want to make for ourselves beyond money and everything you know we want to represent possibility you know we want to represent the fact that we don't necessarily have to channel our money other other through other sort of systems when we can do it ourselves and things of that nature so i think cynthia just focus on uh, just understand it's part and parcel of uh, the price you have to pay. So when when they come along, uh, you should impress them really and be like, oh, thank God, you know, because sometimes uh, the better side of what we do as human beings comes out when we are faced with opposition and things of that nature. Oh, thank you so much, Kudai, for coming on this live. And um, I hope you, uh, you know, you got the answers that you were looking for and um thank you so thank you thank you Taya. thank you bye See you later, I... right -o. so um how do you plan to create employment like within the communities that you serve because you mentioned a few countries now that you operate in um like how how do you plan to and I know like you're quite big in Zimbabwe like Zimbabwe is probably your biggest market right now isn't it so um before actually before you answer that question I've got somebody here is that Ibrahim I think so yeah shall we shall we get him on or do you oh, want to answer the question first? Yeah, it's Ibra. But I, I, I'm just listening. I've got no questions at the moment, but I, if I do, I'll, I'll reach out. But yeah, I'm, just oh, enjoying, I'm just enjoying the show. Yeah. You oh, the good. Clear. Oh, brilliant. Okay. So, Taquana, how do you, um, Florence, your service is exceptional. Keep up the standards. Oh, best Thank you. service is exceptional. Like the best customer service in Zimbabwe, I think. I, I can safely yeah. say the best customer service in Zimbabwe, right? So you got to well, keep it that way. Lawrence is pretty exceptional as well. As of, uh, I know her story, you know, she's a very phenomenal human being. She is. She truly is. Um, okay, going back to the question. How do you plan on creating employment opportunities within the communities that you serve? You serve Zimbabwe quite well, and I know you're kind of working your way around Africa, and we know that employment is a big problem everywhere in the world, but particularly in Africa, there's a lot of informal workers, and how, how can you better serve people with employment? I think growing, growing is one thing that is always going to demand that you, you expand on your workforce. So um, 
so the the one thing that I'm always grateful for, like the other day, I was uh, I called my team to come to my house just to have a quick motivational. Uh, just yesterday, I think, and I saw you know literally 15 or so young people at my house, and I realized you know I'm not only impacting these 15, and maybe they have people that they look after. So literally uh in the 40s or 50s when you put them all together so in, in my wildest not in my wildest imagination did i ever think that will create a, a i would go to, i would migrate over to to england and then come back home and uh, you know be in a person where i employ people to work as customer service um and pay them four or five times what the actual market demands you know like i'm very fair in that sense if the market says you pay these people x amount of money i believe mm-hmm. money has uh, it gives people some motivation. Um, so I, I, I'm so proud in that sense that we, we, we've been put in a position, thanks to our customers paying patronage to our business, that we can actually employ people. Uh, so in that sense, we're just like, uh, you know, two young Africans who started something on a more like on a gut feeling. And now we're in a position where we employ people in Zimbabwe. We also have people employed um, in, in Guinea as well. Um, and those numbers are constantly growing. So, you know, the hope is at some point we'll have 10,000 people on our payroll uh, because we built something that the community wow. needed. That is amazing. So inspiring. And just um, uh, just listening to it and like, you know, because I follow all your posts on social media and you always talk about God's plan. And if that's God's plan for you, that is an amazing plan and all the best with that plan. Uh, D is saying, is asking a question. Taquana, did you need any sponsors at the beginning of your business? If so, how did you go about it? So at the beginning of our business, I mean, this is the one really important thing that we were talking about. I think when you start business, I think you should always have a, a bias for action. You know, just get started. You have a wild idea. You think about it at 12 midnight. By the time you get to 8 in the morning, uh, try and sell the idea to somebody, at least one or two people. And just go from there. I think it's always been something that we've always uh, emphasized on. We've always had a bias for action. Uh, but when we first started, we didn't have, I think, for about three, four, five months, we were using our own funds, really. Me and my business partner, we, you know, we were just uh, putting money into things that we, we didn't really know was going to work. And then mm-hmm. as fate would happen, like, you know, I think it seems like I was saying synchronicity is God's way of remaining anonymous. My business partner, um, a couple of years ago before we started business, had um, had a discussion with a gentleman from France who said to him, listen, I'm looking to go into Guinea to... Uh, I've got mining interests. Uh, can you point me to a particular person that can you know, help me get you know, some sort of mining um, a project going in Guinea? So my business partner simply did that. Simple conversation over tea and lunch and everything. And then a couple of years down the line, you know, that's the very same gentleman from, uh, from, uh, from France came over and saw my business partner in, in, in London over lunch again. And over lunch, my business partner said, you know what, I've got this business that I've been working on for a couple of weeks now. Uh, you know, we're having four, five, ten transactions a day. Um, and, you know, we're making a profit. And then almost immediately they've pumped in money. we just under a million dollars in investment as we speak today uh, over the last couple of years that we've been in business. So we had, you know, we're fortunate enough to have funding at the very beginning. But that isn't a reason why anybody should really not get into the sort of stuff that they want. Let people and sponsors find you doing what you do already. You know, and um, over the years I've come to find that even lending sometimes could be a good way to put your equity, uh, hold on to your ownership of your business and things of that nature so you could go down that route in the absence of people willing to fund you but uh as you as you know you know we just got started with our own funds and uh said a bit of a prayer and, and kept it moving wow that is another lesson really to be learned like you just said uh you need to repeat that you said let them find you what was that you said? Let them find you where you I are. so much, no. <laughs> The lesson to be learned is just get started anyway, right? Because once you've got whatever you're doing, those right opportunities will find you. And that is so true because I, I see that in my own, on my own journey that I I didn't have any money to get started. I just had talent and talent is not enough if you haven't got business acumen. And I just got started and along my journey, uh, just from me getting started and putting myself out there, there's opportunities that are coming my way that wouldn't have come my way if I didn't get started in the first place. 
So that is a great lesson for everybody. I've got a question one here. It's one, of, it's one of those things that I live by, really. You don't have to be good to get started, but to get mm -hmm. good, you have to get started. Simple. Yes. Definitely. I've got a question here from Siniki Wemoyo. She says, Taquana, in regards to a unique selling point and customer profile with several other businesses offering similar services, what can you share to help with targeting the right customers and standing out in the market? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what's been true or past, right? Um, I came into Zimbabwe. And uh, in Zimbabwe, for some reason, these massive companies that have been sending money for hundreds of years are okay with the fact that um, you know a customer can go to the bank and queue up you know for X amount of hours because uh, they're too far removed to understand that a particular needs needs of a particular user, right? Um, and uh, it's becomes I think with these bigger companies becomes more about about you know the bottom line and the money that they make, et cetera, et cetera. I have a fault. I mean, I have a, I have a caring fault to a fault, really. I just think it's 2020. Nobody should be queuing in any particular line. Business exactly. is all about trying to use, right? That's why any business ever started. Uh, Microsoft started because they wanted to shorten the time you, you take to get connected to the internet or things of that nature. Um, but for some reason, Zimbabwe in particular, I can't really speak for other countries, uh, queuing has become very much normalized. And businesses, as you can tell, don't seem to care about that. Uh, so when we came along, as far as trying to uh, differentiate ourselves, we had we came up with an idea like no one's mom should stay in a queue. So we delivered money into people's homes. A very simple idea. We took the necessary precautions that go with that particular sort of uh, a business decision. So trying to differentiate yourself is important, Nikki, I think. Um, but uh, also having a good understanding of the market you're trying to serve is always going to do you good. You can't start a business and you're chilling in London and serving customers that are in Zimbabwe, Arari, Kaduma, Blawayo, Ghana, Accra, uh, uh, you're too far removed to understand the plight of the user. Uh, sometimes, you know, that empathy only comes as and when you walk in their shoes. So I think um, being very open to things, doing things that have never been done is always a very positive thing. And it always going to give you opportunities to give to differentiate yourself from from what other uh, businesses are offering wow so nikki i hope you've got your answers there uh one of them was money at your doorstep like who else in, in zimbabwe is delivering money at your doorstep they might do it after after send it to but they're definitely not doing it now so there you go that's one but they have many um how did you actually come up with a really cool name like send it to with the smile on the end like how did you come up with that it couldn't get any better i think that's all of my business partner really i think it uh it came down to one day so when we first started our business my business partner had called uh, our company oza remit i think oza is a game that they play in guinea like similar to pada in, in zimbabwe um, so before we, we met, we sort of joined forces and became business partners. That's the name we had. And then we got a bunch of people on, to, um, on board now with a bit of a team. And one night we said, you know what, let's, let's rebrand and come up with a very cool name that people are going to identify with, pretty cool and things of that nature. And in line with, uh, in line with what we're trying to, you know, trying to connect people and bring a smile, you know, send a smile home. Um, mm -hmm. Several sort of different names. And as you know, once you go on, on the internet, most of these business names are taken. So we're just trying to find ways of play some sort of trick on the name. And uh, my business partner came up with uh, the winning name, Send It To. And uh, it's really, you know, really uh, stuck in the sense that we are going to be a kind of company that's going to send a lot of things, you know, like uh, Airtime is our books to Amazon. What, 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 uh, what books were to Amazon, you know, and by the time we're done, we want to be in a position whereby we allow people to send flowers to their loved ones in hospitals. Um, wow, that's, that's amazing. Great. So you've created like a transferable brand. That is really powerful. That is really powerful. Wow. So, um, oh, we've got a question here from Lorraine Venekai, another Sawira here. Hi, Sawira Lorraine. What other countries can we send money to? So Lorraine, currently we can send money to um, we can send money to Zimbabwe. We can send money to Guinea. We can send money to Ghana. We can send money to Mozambique. We can send money to uh, Uganda. 
uh, the countries are constantly increasing, really. I think we are, by the time we're done by next week, we'll have South Africa on board. Hopefully, uh, you know, the APIs and the technical side of things haven't been dealt with. So it's just several. We keep adding more countries to it. And hopefully by the time we're done, just like our airtime reminiscence sort of business, we hope to have the entire globe covered. Hmm, lovely. Uh, Matilda says, that's so true. Somebody started what you are following. So why can't you start some um start what others can follow? That is so true. And that's exactly what um 22 is doing. They are on pay setters, so they are a game changer. So they are in Zimbabwe right now to change the game of how things work. Like um, sending my family money to their doorstep is the most convenient thing that you could do for anyone in Zimbabwe. When I was there, I remember spending one whole afternoon waiting outside Western Union um, with my brother. And I say to him like, like what is this like it was such a culture shock for me and as soon as sandy two started the home delivery i was sold because i i stood in that queue one afternoon and it was just like what a waste of my time of my valuable time waiting in the queue for money like who does that in this day and age so yes um we can't wait to see what else sandy two is going to start because they have started something great in zimbabwe and africa and we can't wait to see um what else they have in store for us um we are slowly running out of well quickly running out of time oh and so many questions but i think we can't hold you for too long because i understand how busy you are um but before you go we still need some tips and tricks because we never even got to like you know some tips and tricks for success uh what can you share with us oh and i, I haven't mentioned this to everybody that's watching we've actually got a discount code from send it to and it is yard so what is the discount code good to the taquana so anybody that has used Sandy2 or anybody that hasn't used Sandy2, you get a nice little uh, one pound discount for you to send airtime to any country in the world. So, you know, just uh, let us know who, uh, what the recipient, ideally you want to send it to somebody you've never sent before and just let us know what they say to you. That instant gratification is bound to come. Uh, so that's, that's what that one pound is going to do, you know. It's uh, uh, it brighten up someone's day. Wow. And so you were, you were saying you wanted to know what sort of tips I can give people. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's very simple. I, I've just streamed it down to just three things that I've, I've come to find that are very important in this journey of uh, life or business, really. I think one of the most important things is you have to understand the first one is you have to believe that I, Tyre, I'm the one person that's going to get into this line of work and I'm going to be that one person that comes out having succeeded. Really, you have to have that uh, matrix Neo where you, you know, when uh, I think who's the Lawrence Fishburne says like, "Wow, he's the one." When you see when he's ducking bullets and everything. So I think you have to, you have to have that self belief that you know what I am the one. You know, I'm the one person that has been put on this earth uh, to achieve this particular outcome. You know, as they say, you know, eighty when you're eighty years old, ninety years old, hundred years old, you're going to be lying in your deathbed, and your dreams are going to come and surround you and say, you know what, uh, mm -hmm. you could have written. Uh, or you could have uh, started this morning project and we came to you because only you could have brought us to life, but we are dying with you because you chose not to start something. So I think mm -hmm. inherently those are, you have to believe that, um, you know, you are God's gift to earth. And that's, that's just the facts of the matter. You know, like we are all blessed in very different ways and there are things that you can achieve that I cannot achieve. So you have to have that self-belief to almost bulletproof sort of self-belief that has to be there without a doubt. You have to believe that I, you know, Tyre, mm -hmm. Matilda, um, mm -hmm. and all this here, that they have been set on this sort of uh, um, uh, on this planet to achieve certain things, and only them can achieve it. Um, so that's one. That's very important. So as and mm -hmm. when the problems come your way, you are not going to be. You know, you know, it's not going to really um, cause you any sort of. It's not going to cause you to deviate from the path. So self belief is important. I can't state that enough. Uh, every young man that I meet here in Zimbabwe. 
I always tell them, you know, they come to me like, oh, Taquana, you've done this, this and that. And I always tell them, dude, you have greatness within you. You know, you just may not just know it just as yet, but you are equally as great as anybody around you because everybody around in the world, be it Jesus, be it uh, Steve Jobs, be it Dan Grote, be it Strive Masiwa in Zimbabwe's case, they put on their trousers one leg at a time. So that's important. Uh, then number two is, um, you know, you don't have to necessarily know anything to get started, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to necessarily to get started. But to get good, you have to get started. You know, anybody comes and offers you something you know nothing about, just simply get started. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody's true of Michael Jordan, it's true of Ronaldo, it's true of uh, uh, JJ or Kocha. These people started from zero, and this is where you are. In order for you to master anything, you simply have to get started. And once mm -hmm. you get started, and master at your craft. So it's important that you get into the habit as and when anybody offers you anything, don't let it don't let it intimidate you, right? Uh, you do not have to know anything. You do not have to be good uh, to get started. But when you get started, you get good, you know, and you eventually end up knowing everything. So that's always been important for me. Like I always, I can't overstate this whole thing. It's uh, if you are to look at, at our 72 journey, it's always been about that. Uh, we didn't know how to connect to particular networks in Ethiopia or whatever, but we simply got started. And today we have a range of networks, mobile network operators that we're connected to, simply mm -hmm. because what? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This school young Africans got started, you know, and, and if I can do it, and I'm not the smartest tool in the box, and neither is my business partner, but though he would, uh, he would disagree with that. Um, but we simply got started, and here we are today, we are pace setters, you know, we are setting the pace. Um, but just a couple of years ago, we did not know anything. So that's number two. And number three is persistency. You know, um, what will go wrong will go wrong. And the people that tend to make it in life, I, I always have, I have this really deeply embedded uh, sort of uh, philosophy about succeeding. Uh, people don't fail in life. People simply give up. Mm -hmm. That's true. Once you, that, you then definitely know that, um, you know, yes, I'm failing at this particular uh, point, but you know, I have to persist. It's like walking into a room where somebody's having a, a heart operation, you know, it's, it's going to be messy, bloody everywhere. And mm -hmm. you are inclined to, wow, this operation is a failure. But if you come two, three years down or two, three months down the line, when you see that person all patched up and he's walking, he's smiling, he's eating chicken like he's not supposed to, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. he just had a operation, you're like, wow, I think you failed. You know that operation is just so messy. So that's that's what that's what failure does. You know when you knee deep in it, uh, it feels like you're not going to succeed, and the the tunnel, you know, the lighter than the other tunnel is never coming. But you just have to keep moving. You know once you find yourself yeah. in hell, thing you can ever do is keep moving, um, mm -hmm. and that is very key. You know self belief, uh, getting started, and persistency. And uh, as a result of those three things, we find ourselves here doing absolutely amazing things. I am just a kid from the slums when it comes to it. And um, I never thought I would be here, but through the grace of the God, of, of, of God and uh, through the support of the community and through my business partner, you know, who's always been there at very old times, uh, we've managed to do something amazing and we still continue to want to show that we can represent uh, that anything, even people from our backgrounds can achieve anything. Wow, that is so, so powerful. Uh, what I got, my three um, lessons I got from what you just said was I need to believe in myself. For me to get good, I've got to get started and not to give up. That is just, um, thank you for that. And thank you so much. I couldn't thank you now for for gracing us with your presence and having this conversation because I know how busy you are but you've taken time out of your busy schedule to do this so we we're so grateful have you got something to say about pay setters <laughs> no, you, guys, you guys are doing a phenomenal job I think um, our story has to be told by us you know I think for long our story has been told by other people yeah very sort of vantage point but we are doing incredible things and our story has to you know monkey see monkey do people mm -hmm. imitate the things that they see. and uh in our communities all we need is better examples you know i've uh, i keep telling my brother you know the reason why why uh uh 
why a lot of people go to the UK and end up finding themselves in the healthcare profession, just like myself, is because when I went to the UK, people around me were doing pretty much the same thing. And also yeah. I ended up getting it purely because I thought that was what, what was possible. And today, I uh, hope somebody's sitting at home and saying, ah, oh, you know, this guy has just started a money transfer business. Um, I can get into that sort of uh, line of work as well. Uh, I can start my own company. If you come into the same field that I am, I'll have to eat you up. But that's good competition. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you, uh, mm -hmm. you're doing a good job of eating them up, put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Nick said, many thanks, Taquana. Um, may you be blessed abundantly in all you're doing. Thanks again for sharing my home city yesterday, right when Thank I you. felt so homesick. See how you impact communities. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Any final word from yourself? <laughs> uh, well, this is the, like the third final word. Yeah, um, you know, it's just we okay. just don't want to let you go. That's why. <laughs> okay, I'll have the final word. Uh, before I got onto this show, right, I was just watching uh, something. You know, it just it just so happened that I ended up watching Denzel Washington. Um, you know, giving, I think he was thanking people for the award that he just won. And he said something very profound. He said that ease, easiness, right, or ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Wow. See you at work. Wow. Powerful. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate the people that watch and hopefully Bye. a few more. Thank you so much to all our audience. You've been amazing this evening. Thank you so much for engaging. And if you missed the start of this, I would greatly recommend you watch the live from the start because Taquana has been nothing short of inspirational. So go back and watch it all over again. Thank you so much. Uh, next week, we've got our final episode um, and then after that, we've got our reunion web, um, episode. So we've got our first black mayor of Liverpool, the Lord Mayor, Anna, Anna Ro Rothery. <laughs> I'm saying her name wrong. But yes, we've got our first black um, Lord Mayor. So she'll be with us here at 5 p.m. on Sunday, next Sunday. So tune in. And then we've got a VIP guest on our reunion um, episode. We've got Thames's hair that will be joining us. So thank you once again and see you next week. And thank you for all your comments and being part of this today. Bye.